Hello YouTubers, this is Optimus Frank and welcome back to my channel. And for this second video, we will be reviewing Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Trilogy Cliff Jumper. And if you like the content on my channel and want to help it grow, drop a like, subscribe, and click on the bell for future content. So let's get into it. First off, when I saw this Cliff Jumper, I had to get him because of the form and detail. He's almost like a masterpiece figure, and masterpiece figures tend to look exactly like the 80s cartoon with pastel like colors. This Cliff Jumper, however, looks more realistic. Cliff Jumper is a Legends class size, but is categorized as deluxe. But he is smaller, he's a smaller size, and it looks like you get less for your money. Um, but you don't. Uh, here's a deluxe size Siege Hound, so we see the difference. His look is very close to the G1 cartoon Cliff Jumper. His head sculpt is spot on and he looks lean, not like an Oompa Loompa like other figures have in the past. Um, they gave him articulation and minimized and excluded any kibble. Uh, every port, peg, and joint has purpose. There are also no hollow parts or limbs. He has several ports throughout his body, legs, arms, bottom of his feet, to put in as many weapons as you can, and you can experiment with different configurations. Um, and as stupid as this looks, this is one of my favorite configurations. Now, Cliff Jumper is a deluxe class figure, but he has a similarity to leader class figures, especially the Siege ones, um, in the sense that the weapons that come with him are versatile and he can armor up without weaponizers like COG or Six Gun. And Cliff Jumper can change more so than your average deluxe class. In other words, like Shockwave and Ultra Magnus, Cliff Jumper can weaponize himself. I especially like that his weapon alone is a tip of the hat to two moments in the 80s G1 series. It's a recreation of the sniper cannon that Cliff Jumper tried to kill Megatron with in the first episode. And it reminds me that Cliff Jumper is an Autobot assassin. He's a killer. In the G1 series, I remember he was scouting around with Hound and getting to know Earth. Eventually, they spotted the Decepticons, and Cliff Jumper was ready to take Megatron out with that sniper cannon. And as soon as he spotted Megatron with his cronies, without hesitation, he told Hound, we have to kill him. And if you were a kid in the 80s, you might remember that cartoons were violent. And cartoon violence may have had its consequences, but for what it's worth, it was entertaining. Way more fun than solving your problems with magical cards. So he aimed, took a shot, and he missed. And then they were chased away by Laserbeak. So he wasn't the best assassin, but it was a badass moment. And win or lose, he stood out as the Autobot who almost took out Megatron and would have ended the whole cartoon early. For more on Assassin Cliff Jumper, I recommend playing through Fall of Cybertron 2. He's a ninja in that game. His weapon also breaks up into five pieces, and with those five pieces, you can put him on his vehicle to recreate his jet ski mode. Another flashback from the 80s cartoon. Uh, all this and he couldn't fly. So Cliff Jumper's painted in a solid red with a glossy black on his rear windshield and wheels. His front windshield and side windows have a clear transparent blue. He has no Autobot symbol though, it's only visible in his car mode. From the top down, his head is on a shallow ball point. He bends and rotates the shoulders, elbows and wrists. He can, uh, he can rotate his wrists, I mean. He can lean back and forth by the hips and rotate the hips at a 360 degrees. Uh, each of his legs also rotate at 360 degrees. His knees also bend. His ankles uh, do bend uh, or come in for better balancing, which is uh, it's a pretty it's pretty standard for um, Siege and Earthrise in, in these lines. His shield also comes off as an optional shield. His backpack comes off, I mean, as an optional shield, um, but I'm not too wild about uh, me. Personally, I prefer that if it's to be a shield, let it transform into look like a shield. This looks like a car part. It looks like he ripped it off a junkyard, really. And he, he reminds me of Ron Burgundy when he, when he was, went in the battle with a bedpost. So lately, it's become a trend for uh, Autobot or Transformer to get uh, to stand on their own platform. So I'm trying here with Cliff Jumper. I'm trying to get him to stand on his, his platform like RC or Shockwave do. And luckily for me, it worked on the first try. Nailed it. There it is. I nailed it. He's surfing that thing. Look at that. Jumper's weapon comes in uh, five pieces. And really, if you don't like the super cannon, you can separate it. And you can actually give him two mini guns if you'd like. Uh, or what I figured with this little piece here, which um, may seem awkward to some, but uh, I think I figured out what to do with it. So um, I peg it in the back and it gives him this kind of uh, scorpion gun configuration, say. So you put it there, you peg it in here. Just like that, and there you go. And I, I like this. It's just 
it, it gives it purpose. Uh, before, I, before I discovered this, I would just do this. I would take it out and do a little notch there, just peg it on the side. And I don't know, that, that looks that looks weird. And it's kind of like an awkward shoulder shield. I don't know. I, I saw somebody do it in a video before and I was like, oh, that's what, that for, that's, what that's for. But um, I prefer this here. It makes more sense to me that to prop it on his back and give him some kind of, you know, some kind of ratchet, uh, ratchet apparatus there, or or um, or cannon there. You know, so I, I like this look a lot better. So let's take it from the top. First, you remove the shield, bring down the chest plate, lift the hood with the Autobot symbol on there, bend the arms back at 90 degrees, point the fists up. You go to his feet. You fold out the doors. You point the toes down, and then you. Uh, fold the wheels out just like that so you connect the toes and then this is the best part of the transformation before so you have to before you get to that you have to turn the hips at 180 degrees and then what's going to happen is you're going to switch the arms in place for the legs so they kind of switch positions in order for you to front uh to form the front of the car and uh, there's an open back there so that's where the shield's going to come into play those two little pegs with the fists and the uh, go in those two little holes go in two little pegs on the shield and uh, you got to tuck in the the black peg and then it'll be able to fit in there nice and snug and tight. His alternate mode has these big seams, especially the main gap at the sides, uh, right there where the door opens. But it's a small price to pay for everything else he is. He's well done, everything fits tightly, nothing loose or hanging out. His wheels have detailed silver rims also. And there's that Autobot symbol I mentioned earlier. It's right there on the hood. Now, he's supposed to be a Porsche Turbo 924, and on that car, there's a vent on the right side of the hood. And like the Porsche uh, Turbo 924, uh, Cliff Jumper has this little detail here. You see the little etching next to, on the right side of his hood, uh, where the vent is on the actual Porsche uh, T924. So, uh, that, that's an awesome detail they added to make him look more like a Porsche. Um, now, I have Wind Charger out here, Legends Class Wind Charger. Um, just to show the difference in quality between the two. So uh, first off, uh, with Wind Charger, uh, I mean, like I said earlier, Cliff Jumper is nice and tight, nothing loose. Uh, and this one here, the hood is, you know, for this Legends class, it's pretty flimsy. It's like he's talking. And, and then a big no-no for me for this is that you can see his face. And I tried turning it around, but it even worse since this situation here, if you turn his face around, or his head around, um, but um, yeah, I, I just I never like it when you can visibly see the the Transformers face. It's just a big no-no to me. Let's look at this other car just so you see what I'm talking about. This is more acceptable. I mean, it, this he, he, it makes him look like a gobot. Now there are two ports in the car, but if you pop up the trunk, you get two more ports. His little hands there. So I did this. You can also attach the sniper cannon onto the top port in the car mode. Now to get his jet ski mode you want to take his cannon, break them all up into five pieces and first you, once you do that, you take that black part, you split it in half and you connect it to the bottom with the two little pegs right there under his fists. And then you, it really connects through there, throughout the, the bottom of the car and then right there there are hidden red pegs there you can connect his guns to and you'll see the little grooves in there right where the handles are of those the two little mini guns and then right there um, past the wheel you'll see two other grooves that you can shove those two little ski things into um, those little water skis in and there you have it you have his uh, alt mode in his water ski mode um, from the 80s Thank you for watching. If you think of any other ways to configure this Autobot Cliff Jumper, mention it in the comments below. And if you liked what you saw here, hit like, subscribe, and then hit that little bell to get notifications for new content from this channel. Thanks again.